Today I'd like to talk about being the only atheist in a room full of theists. It's a diatribe I like to call, there is to a god now, pass the fucking string beans. Because that's usually where it comes up. It'll be at some social event or a family gathering. You'll be sitting around the table minding your own business and suddenly those seven fateful words will come up. Somebody will say, so you don't believe in God, huh? And you don't want to have the conversation. You don't feel like playing stump the atheist. You even try to distract them with something like, hey, look, your kids are on fire, but it never works. They're in their zone, you know? They lean in really close and they put on their best profound face and then they'll pose the challenge. The challenge usually comes in the form of a question and the question usually starts, so how do you explain, and that's where I stop them. I'll say, hey man, I'm going to let you finish your question and everything, but before you do, I'd like to point out that my ability or inability to answer whatever question you're about to ask has nothing to do with the existence or non-existence of God. When I say I don't believe in God, I'm stating a lack of belief, not a claim of knowledge. I'm not an expert in the origins of life or the cosmos any more than the next guy, and failing to be so doesn't disqualify me from atheism. What's more, whatever question you're about to pose is also one for which you don't have an answer. I know that you think you have the answer, but my guy has superpowers times infinity doesn't really count at all. But by all means, carry on. I don't want to dissuade them after all. It's pretty easy to argue with a Christian since they really only have those three different arguments that they use. So they'll throw out Pascal's wager or the lunatic liar or Lord Stick or the first mover argument or whatever, and I'll refute it in whatever way I refute it. Sometimes you'll even get that sophisticated theist. You know, the one that went on that their internet and looked up ways to stump atheists. And that's always fun because you get to hear them try to pronounce words like abiogenesis and flagellum. And you can refute these points too if you want, but there's usually no point. Most of the time they don't even understand the argument they're regurgitating enough to know when they've been countered. So you'll sit there and you'll suffer the slings and arrows of their tortured logic, and you'll come out on top. But eventually the tone of the argument will change altogether. It'll no longer be a rational discussion on any level. It'll turn into something like, well, I don't want to live in a world without God, or there is to a God, now pass the fucking string beans. And that's when the real nature of the argument comes out. That's when it becomes obvious that this was never about logic, it was never about reason, it was about emotion. It wasn't about the world you observe, it's about the world you want to observe. Eventually you'll have to come to understand that there is no logical reason to believe in God. If there was, atheists would believe in God. We got where we got by using logic, and believe me, if there was a shred of evidence to suggest that I got to live on for eternity in space Disneyland, I'd take that deal even if it meant I couldn't have fish on Fridays. But even knowing that logic will never work, you're still going to try to employ it, you silly little Christians that stand between me and a second helping of mashed potatoes. So I'd like to make a small request of you. Before you bring your logical argument to me, I want you to take a deep look at it and ask yourself if this was evidence going the other way. In other words, if this was offered as proof that God didn't exist, would it sway you at all? If I walked up to you and I said something like, I'm going to prove to you that God doesn't exist. Now let me tell you about the bacterial flagellum. Would you listen to anything else I had to say at that point? And if the flagellum evidence ends up going the other way, would you give up believing in God? Are you subscribing to all the flagellum blogs and newsletters just so you can know for sure if this God thing holds water? Look, you're never going to win an argument with an atheist by using logic. We're better at it. That's our thing. You have to admit going in that yours is not the rational argument. If you insist on arguing with atheists, at least be honest with yourself about where your belief comes from, and I'll give you a hint. It's not your brain.